Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another PS4 video. So it's finally here. The 11.0 jailbreak from the flow has been released. Initially, we thought it was going to take a few weeks uh, for other hackers in the scene to try and create their own implementation of it. However, the flow decided perhaps that it was just taking too long and he decided to release his own implementation. So the flow has released the jailbreak. It is out at this time. Now it's not super, you know, easy to implement yet or use. You know, I think it would be irresponsible of me to try and turn this into like a full, uh, you know, PS4 jailbreak guide like it's the final form because things should get uh, simplified in the future, perhaps using a Raspberry Pi to automatically inject the exploits sometime in the future. Uh, it's going to get easier right now. It's still in the early stages, so it's a bit of a hassle to set up and get it working. But I will show you guys in this video how to get the exploit running. If you don't care about convenience and you just want to, you know, have a go at it yourself and get it running. So, yeah, let's go ahead and look at that here. So, we got the release here from the flow. We take a look at it. It's got all the information, exactly how you can get it set up. Now, the thing that makes it a little inconvenient to set up at the moment is that you need to use Linux. So, if your primary operating system is Windows, like mine, like most people's, then you'll have to set up Linux in a virtual machine. I don't believe this will work under... Uh, the Windows subsystem for Linux. It may be possible with some configuration, but it would appear that uh, it would be easier just to set it up in a virtual machine like VirtualBox or VMware Player. Those are a couple of free virtual machine softwares that you can use to virtualize Linux. So anyway, let's go ahead and get this set up here. So what I'm using is I'm using VirtualBox. I've got Linux Mint already installed. I'm not going to go over how to set up and install a virtual machine you know there's other tutorials for that if you don't know how to do it but you basically want to get a linux distro i'm using mint which is a ubuntu based distro so you can follow this if you're using mint or ubuntu you can install one of those distros here in a virtual machine and all you want to do to begin with just set it up as normal as you normally would and then get it up and running once you get the virtual machine set up you're going to want to open up the terminal so once you have the terminal open, the first thing is to update the distro with sudo apt update and then two and symbols and sudo apt upgrade. And that will go ahead and get all the updates installed. Of course, assuming that you're on a Ubuntu based distro that uses the apt package manager. And of course, you're also going to want to install Python 3. A lot of distros will probably have that already installed, but just in case you can check by doing sudo apt install Python 3. And you're just going to want to enter each command one by one that you see uh, in the official repo for the exploit from the flow. So the first command is git clone. You want to clone the repository somewhere on the virtual machine. So I enter that command in first. Once that's done, you're going to want to then uh, make sure you can see that that's been downloaded. So use the ls command to view the files. And you can see we've got the pppwn folder. We're going to want to go into that folder with change directory, so cd to pppwn. Once we're in that folder, we can then install the requirements from the requirements.txt file that we have in that folder. So we're just going to copy the next command, which is the sudo pip install r requirements.txt. We'll install that. Once that's installed and we've got all of the requirements, uh, we can then go ahead and compile the payloads. So we've got the stage one payload using make-c stage one firmware. And then you can enter your firmware here. Right now it supports obviously 11.0. It also supports 9.00 just for people who want to test on 9.00. You know, if you're on 9.00, you can compile it for that firmware to test it. But obviously we're doing 11.0 here. So we're just going to leave it as default. And we're going to enter that command there. And that's going to build the payload for stage one. And then once that's done, we just want to enter the next command, which is the same command, but for stage two. So we're going to enter the command for stage two to build the stage two payload. And once that is complete, we are basically ready to actually run this. So before we can run this, we do need to shut down the virtual machine and get everything set up. So the way that this jailbreak works is that it's using uh, a network vulnerability where we basically have to set up a PPPoE type network setup on your PS4 and you need to connect an Ethernet cable between uh, your computer and your PS4. So again, this is why I say it's not super convenient to set up for everybody right now. This is the early stages. You know, once we get like some kind of Raspberry Pi implementation, then it will be a convenient solution for everyone. But right now, obviously, 
a lot of requirements here. You need a virtual machine running Linux. You need to wire your PS4 directly to your computer with an Ethernet cable. So once you have an Ethernet cable connected between your PS4 and your computer, you want to shut down your virtual machine and change the network settings in the virtual machine. So you can select your distro in your VM. And this should be pretty similar for VMware Player as well, even though I'm using VirtualBox here. You want to just go to your settings on that virtual machine, in my case for my Linux Mint installation. And then in the panel on the left, you want to head down to Network. And then from Network, we've got your network type, which by default will be probably on NAT, a network address translation. You want to change that over to Bridged Adapter. So if you change that to Bridged Adapter, this will just allow your virtual machine to access uh, the Ethernet port on your computer directly. Uh, so with this, you can then select the adapter, which needs to be the Ethernet port on your computer. So the adapter that represents that Ethernet port on your computer, that is the adapter you want to select, which in my case is this Realtek Gaming 2.5 GBE family controller. Uh, in your case, it will be labeled something different probably. So you can, if you don't know which one to select, you can open up the command prompt on your computer, on your host computer, and type in ipconfig space forward slash all. That'll grab all of the network interfaces on your computer. And you just want to find the one that says Ethernet. So your Ethernet adapter, find that one. And then once you find it, you're looking for the description and the description will give you that interface name, which in my case is the Realtek Gaming 2.5 GBE family controller. So I know that that's the one I want to select in my virtual machine so that my virtual machine can access that uh, adapter. So once you have that selected, you can click OK and then just run the virtual machine again. And then your virtual machine will not have access to the internet anymore. So that's why, you know, in order to download the repository and everything and get all the dependencies installed, we didn't do this at the beginning because we needed internet access to do all that. But now we've got that set up. We can run the virtual machine again. And now we're basically ready. So, okay, so once you're back on the virtual machine, you're going to want to open up the terminal again. And then once again, head back to the exploit folder for the flows exploit. And then we're going to type in IP link, which is going to grab your interface, uh, your different interfaces on the virtual machine, your network interfaces, and you're going to ignore the loopback one. It's never the loopback one. What you're looking for is any of the other network, uh, any other network interfaces in here. So usually the one that's marked broadcast is usually the correct one, but you can see here, there's this one, no carrier broadcast, and then there's this one broadcast multicast. It's probably not gonna be the one that says no carrier. So it's probably in my case gonna be ENP0S3. So I would copy that ENP0S3 name here. In your case, copy whichever name it is. Of course, if that one doesn't work, I can try this one, EMP0S8. But uh, yeah, it's probably going to be this one. So I'm going to copy the network interface name there. And then from there, we can actually enter the command, the actual script to run, uh, the Python script that runs the exploit. So that's the last command in the GitHub repo for the flows exploit. So you're going to want to enter that command in here. And you want to change the interface name. So interface equals EN, it's already got ENP0S3 entered here, uh, which is correct for mine. But if your interface name was different, you're going to want to replace that with your interface name there. Uh, so that is essentially how we get the script up and running. And then from there, we can just press enter and you can see it's now running. You might have to enter your password and you should be good to go. It's now running right here. So what we need to do now is switch over to the console here and get things set up on the console. So on the PS4 here, you can see I am on firmware 11.0. This is my revertible PS4. I've reverted it back to 11.0. So I'm on 11.0 right here. So, so from here, we're going to head to our network settings, set up an internet connection using a LAN cable. We're going to go to a custom setup. And what we want to do here is just wait for this to do its thing. So we want to select PPPoE under IP address settings. We want to enter a custom user ID and password. It can be anything in here. Um, so just enter a random username and password. And then we're going to do automatic for everything else. So set everything else to automatic. Do not use proxy. And now we're going to test our internet connection. And as we do this, if we switch back over to our exploit, you can see it's now running the exploit right here. It's detected uh, that the PS4 is testing the internet connection. 
and it's now running the exploit. So you can see it's doing stage one memory corruption. Now, it doesn't always work first time, this exploit. It might take a couple of tries, just like most exploits on the PS4. But uh, we'll see here if it's going to do it first time. Uh, yep, there you go. Done. And you can see here, it says pwned. You get a little message that says pwned. So that is it. You've got the jailbreak up and running. Now, of course, very early stages, all it does is it prints a message that says pwned at the moment. But that is just a test payload that can be replaced with, you know, future payloads that can do other things like the homebrew enabler, you know, like gold hen or potentially, you know, an FTP payload or, you know, debug settings enable, whatever you want. Uh, that will be added at some time. Again, it's very early stages right now, but eventually you'll be able to load different payloads using that by basically just changing the stage two payload with whatever payload you want. So for example, I believe this is how it will work. But basically, if we have a look here, if we go back into, if I go to my home folder in here, we should have, yeah, here it is. Here's the exploit folder and we've got stage two and we've got our stage 2.bin file. So basically, I believe that if you replace this stage 2.bin, or maybe there'll be a stage 3, I'm not sure, but I would assume that if you change stage 2.bin, then it will change to a different payload. So yeah, if we have a look at stage 2 in here, you can see this will probably have the notification. Yeah, here it is, dev notification, and then it writes the notification here. Here's the notification that says pwned. So yeah, essentially, this will probably be replaced with another payload that does something else like, you know, the homebrew enabler or some other payload will come out, multiple payloads will come out and you'll basically just replace the stage two payload with that payload and then you'll be able to load it on your PS4. I believe that's how it will work. But again, very early stages. This is just a basic setup on how to get the Flows exploit up and running as of right now it will get a lot easier in future. This is not the final form of this exploit. It will be improved. There will be a lot of work that goes into, you know, making this uh, as seamless as possible. Right now, it's definitely not seamless, but it will get there eventually. So anyway, huge deal though. We have the exploit finally released now for the PS4. No word on the PS5 yet. We'll have to wait. We'll probably have to wait until the Flows talk in May. Hopefully he'll touch on PS5 or perhaps other developers in the scene might have a look to see you know, how practical this is to implement on the PS5 as well. Uh, anyway, that's it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.